Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we are going to do a tier list breakdown of all of the new master sets from the week two spreadsheet hockey event. I'm also going to discuss in comparison to the other cards in week one, as well as what I got, think you guys should do um, when it comes to really good events or when there's lots of good options and maybe not going overboard, especially with team of the year right around the corner. So we'll get into all that. If you guys enjoy the content, make sure you give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. All right, now I need to discuss a few things. One, all of these master set players are good just because i rate one lowered in a lower tier does not mean they are bad it is in comparison to the other cards from this event and i also take in value for each position as well as the competition that you would have if you were trying to build like a stacked lineup for instance i also need to mention that while there are many attractive options for master set players in this event you need to make sure that you don't go overboard because team of the year is coming and next event that comes out while we're in december now they should have 90 overall players so while they are good now and i will speak to why they are good now and why i think some of them have longevity there are going to be much better players that come out very shortly so you have to keep that in mind however there are some cards in this release that i think you should definitely make even if you're no money spent so let's get into it all right first up in the b tier and he is only ahead of uc soros in this event it is the 89 Zach Hyman. Now, I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt, all right? He does have Spark and he does have Wingman, but both of those, like, Spark is very good, but it is hard to activate because it is very difficult to get cards that don't have Spark and Fly the Zone, for instance. And then, obviously, you'd rather have Fly the Zone than Wingman, in my opinion, so it is very difficult to get them both activated. However, I did. Gold No Contest, this game has been, I've been noticing that this game has taken a real big turn to playing more and more like EASHL because they are trying to make it where all game modes play the same and i think in a couple years that's going to be phenomenal but so far we've seen some really big inconsistencies in hockey ultimate team that you normally wouldn't see because it is playing more like eishl so no contest exceptional stick tension and strength when going into pickups resulting in more wins when battling for the puck i thought that this might be a little bit better but I think why it's so impactful in EASHL is because offensive awareness is much lower. Offensive awareness, guys, is the stat that dictates how good you are at picking up loose pucks. And because a lot of players have high offensive awareness in this game, cards that help out stuff like this don't really have that, or sorry, abilities that have to help out stuff like this don't really have that big of an impact. I didn't notice him winning any more loose puck battles. However, gold, silver close quarters is good. Relentless is completely pointless. I don't know. I've played probably 400 games of rivals and I've seen it maybe go off five times in total. So when you have both of the skating synergies on, he's got uh, 80, or sorry, a, um, he can get up to 90, 90 acceleration and 98. 89 speed uh, which is obviously low in comparison to the other cards his shot is at 89 and 90 in terms of accuracy and power his hand stats are quite low however defensively he is pretty good he's gonna have very close to max stick checking and defensive awareness as well as body checking he is six one so he's decent size i could not get any separation with this card he feels sluggish and he's not so big that it makes up for that so guys that are like six foot six for instance if they're a bit sluggish uh they can smash anyone off the puck i think what would have been better on this card is if maybe Maybe he got Silver Truculence, or he had Unstoppable Force, maybe something like that. Or even Snipe, which I've noticed uh, has just really made those far side wristers a lot more effective. Um, he can't really play center. He can if you are an absolute god on the faceoff, because his faceoff stat is much lower. So you're looking at a pure right-handed winger. And then you combine the fact that there is a much better right-handed winger in this game, or in this release of Master Sets. But then you're going up against McKinnon and Barzal. Uh, you've got Lemieux at the high end. You've also got Stamkos, Pasternak, a lot of good options. So he is by far in the B list. He's the worst non-UC Soros master set from this event, in my opinion. All right, moving on to the A tier is the 89 Quinn Hughes. This is the left-handed version of Kale McCarr. Um, there are some things I'm not a huge fan of. Like, I'd much rather have Kale McCarr. Uh, first of all, Gold Thunderclap. Point shots, like D2D one-timers, this won't, this won't trigger. And when it comes to point shots, I would much rather take a wrist shot to go for a tip or even if you just have seeing eye on and you can throw it in one or just slap shots from the point don't seem to be going in at all send it is probably the most useless ability outside of you know like ice pack or something like that elite edges is obviously very very good and it goes well with how good of a skater he is he's got 94 speed 94 acceleration i definitely noticed his speed i was able to just absolutely fly down the wing with him and if you have gladiator and protector activated on him which is by far the, the choices you want i noticed he was able to hit people which surprised me a little bit like actually bowl over people when you went you got a little bit of a run 
but bumping people, he doesn't get those bumps off. So if you are shoulder to shoulder with someone, uh, you know, like team builder Keith Kachuk or McDavid or sorry, or even McDavid or Matthews, for example, I wasn't able to bump anyone off the puck with Quinn Hughes. That's the only thing keeping him out of like the the um, the S tier. I still think McCarr is better because gold elite edges, you can just feel it. There's something different about Kale McCarr's card, but nonetheless, he is still a very good option. There are some other cards I would take. If you are asking me between Kent, Quinn Hughes and Slavin, I would probably go with Slavin just because of his, his defensive ability. All right, on to the S tier. This Patrice Bergeron is the best center in the game that is not the Oilers Wayne Gretzky. He's got fly the zone and workhorse or spark, so he's got double skating synergies, which is very useful. I think people are overlooking the fact having cards that have that allow you to activate both because as it stands right now, you really can't activate both because it's either one or the other on a lot of them. So he has 90 speed, 90 acceleration when you have fly the zone activated. His shot in the high 80s was phenomenal for me. I used this card for about 10 games and I was able to pick those far side shots very easily. Like he was a very snappy wrist shot that I noticed on him. He does play a little bit sluggish. Uh, there's no way around that. Uh, you definitely don't notice his ability to make cuts and, and speed straight up, but center is the position where you can get away with that, in my opinion. Defensively, 96 defensive awareness, 96 stick checking, and 93 on the draw. Gold quick draw, guys. I've said this for months now. It is one of the best abilities in the game. If you are a master at face-offs and have someone that has 93 face-offs and gold quick draw, you will win every face-off. A lot like William Carlson in the week one of of this event i was like a 95 percent face-off performer with patrice bergeron and that's a huge plus if you are just taking abilities into account getting the possession on almost every draw is such a huge advantage for you he's got silver close quarters so it, above the face-off dots you're able to just fire at home shutdown i would not activate because uh it's off the rush and i think that you know this would just be a waste for you when it comes to superstar abilities i didn't notice it from him when i was using him uh when i was testing out this card but if you are looking for a centerman guys 100 i would make patrice bergeron i'm gonna make him on my no money spent team he is my number one center on my god squad uh like i said unless you have the oilers wayne gretzky this is a great option and i want to talk about longevity too because a lot of these cards will be replaced by future ones and then you're going to be upset that you wasted or you spent a lot of a lot of coins on him a couple things i want to talk about here one as it stands right now it costs about 200 000 coins to make these master set players this is no longer like what it was in prior nhls where it cost 400k to make an msp and you the ability to get coins just wasn't there you're getting so many more coins by just playing this game because of the milestones and the objectives that you're not realizing it all not only with that is you can trade in the 89s or break them down to an 87 and trade them in for future collectibles for a future event so it's not like you're not getting any of your your investment back so you can be a little bit more bullish on buying and making some of these master set players but again the logic still stands i would not make many of them because team of the year is coming but once team of the year happens you know you've got a few months before team of the season and even still i i'm someone who likes to have fun and, and play with the, some of the better cards as the year goes along instead of just saving everything for one event so then we've got the 89 matthew barzell uh, Matthew Barzal, my no money spent team, his X Factor has been incredible and his X Factor is now one of the best cards in the game. Uh, that being said, with Thief and Gladiator activated, which are the ones that I would recommend doing, 95 speed, 93 acceleration, 92 agility, his shot is above 90, his hand stats are in the mid 90s as well, and then you can actually play him at center, no problem. 87 on the draw with Thief activated, he's got good defensive awareness as well, all around great card. Gold Wheels is phenomenal on a card that has 95 speed, the fastest cards in the game with wheels that is where you see the biggest um advantage of having this activated and then silver elite edges is obviously phenomenal his x factor card the, the only thing that's hurting this card's value is that his x factor card is actually better he gets a third synergy actually we'll go and take a look at it he gets a third synergy and he's got gold elite edges which i think is slightly better in my opinion um but uh, again it's all going to come down to just cost obviously now with people seeing how good his his x factor is uh his price is going for 700k so you're no longer able to just buy him but when you take a look at his 89 uh, he's got light the lamp as a third one but then he gets fly the zone as well 97 speed the fastest card in the game essentially and elite edges is just wild um that's the only thing hurting the msp versions of uh, value but that being said it doesn't matter this card is so good as his msp this is a 100 make in my opinion and the reason being is again you can play him at center i think lineup flexibility is a huge plus so even if you get 
you know, a, a lot of good right-handed wingers. Uh, you, you know, on my No Money Spent team, for example, I've got um, I've got Pasternak, I've got Stamkos and Barzal, but even more on my No Money or on my God Squad, it's like McKinnon, Mario Lemieux. I put on the wings, Abinajad, you know, Solani, all of that. You can play Barzal at center and be completely fine because he's just very good all around. 100%, I would make. Um, I've used him enough. His speed is as advertised and uh, just an all-around great card. Now, while Bergeron, I think, was my best performer when I was testing out all these cards, Mackenzie Weger is by far my favorite. Again, you get the elite combo of Workhorse and Fly the Zone. When you get those activated, he's got 91 acceleration, 91 speed. It's the gold truculence that sets him apart. I was throwing around people. Now, you have to be a little careful because if you take runs at people with someone with truculence uh, and high body checking, you can get a penalty. But if you are stride for stride and shoulder to shoulder, it's been very hard to knock people off the puck. And that's because whether it's because the game's playing more like ESHL, but also truculence has been a pretty rare ability that they have not put on a lot of players. I was throwing people around like six foot three Matthews. Just see you later. It, it was nuts. It was so funny. It reminded me if you guys watched me last year, the 90 team builder Adam Foote, which was was one of my favorite cards of all time it reminded me a lot of him not to mention his shot is also sneaky good um this was like i said one of my favorite cards the issue is is that there has been a lot of good right-handed defenseman msp so if you are no money spent and you've got green you've got mcavoy um you know maybe you've got mccarr i don't think i would recommend going out and getting M mckenzie Weger too uh just because that's such an investment and you're putting one of those guys on your third pairing when you know that was card that value could could go to your forwards which would be more important however i'm gonna make mckenzie Weger because i only have mike green so if you only got one of those options and you're free to play 1000 percent make mckenzie Weger. but he is my first I'll, I'll, uh, on the god squad right now he is the best left-handed or sorry right-handed defenseman in the game don't get it twisted by the way he is a left defenseman that shoots right so just make sure you're making the changes for a right-handed defenseman so uh just be aware of that guys but he has been absolutely phenomenal to use and he is in the s tier 100 percent so so guys, there you have it. That is the tier list for the week two MSPs. The one thing I did not touch on is William Carlson. So I used William Carlson last week and I had him in the A tier solely because of quick draw. Like if he didn't have that, he wouldn't have been in the A tier. He got knocked off the puck really easily for me. Um, a lot of people have been asking, what I break? should I break down Carlson as a free-to-play player for Bergeron? I, like, I don't think you should ever do that because you're wasting half the value and you could go out and get another card for a little bit more investment. But Bergeron is by far better than William Carlson. I was actually stunned they gave him quick draw because it basically made Carlson completely pointless if you haven't made him yet. Like there's no way that I would ever try and get Carlson over Bergeron it just makes it there's no point to it unless you want two centers with quick draw in which case then yeah okay but you could just go Oli Jokinen and save up for the team builder and grab Oli Jokinen, who in my opinion is way better because he doesn't get knocked off the puck all right guys that is going to do it for today's video let me know what you think in the comment section down below and i'll see you next time Have